Um, many of you might remember a few weeks ago we had a message uh, called the new man. Um, if you have not seen it, you can see the archived version on our YouTube page. It's message number seven. In this message, we saw that according to the Bible, there are two creations. The old creation and the new creation. Now, the old creation is the man who is created by God, but became fallen and separated from God, having nothing to do with God living according to the fallen, sinful nature. The new creation is not only born of God, but also created and constituted with God. The new creation are those who are filled with Christ, one with Christ, and even living Christ out in their living every day. Here we can see that the new Jerusalem is not a part of the old creation. The new Jerusalem is altogether a part of the new creation. Let's read the next verse on our verse sheet, 2 Corinthians 5.17. So then, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, they have become new. Now the word Jerusalem is composed of two Hebrew words. Jer Jeru, which uh, means foundation, and Salem, which means peace. Thus, Jerusalem means the foundation of peace. Now, according to the Bible, God Himself <coughs> is peace. The first few words in the verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, say this, And the God of peace himself. God himself is peace. The new Jerusalem will be solidly grounded, founded, and safeguarded in God himself, who is peace. So here we can see a little bit about the name. The new Jerusalem is altogether a part of the new creation. And it is solidly grounded, founded, and safeguarded in the person of God Himself, who is peace. Now we have to ask the question, what or who is the New Jerusalem? And we'll begin to see a glimpse of this in the next two sets of verses. How about we have brothers read Revelation 21, 9-11... And then following that, the sisters read Revelation 21.2. And if you're not reading, really pay attention to the words of these verses. Okay, so brothers first. And one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in spirit, Unto a great and high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And then I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So the scene in these verses are wonderful. In Revelation 21, 9 through 11, there is an angel who comes to the Apostle John. And he says, come here. Let me show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he takes him to a high mountain. And who does he show him? The holy city, New Jerusalem. This indicates that the New Jerusalem is not pointing us to a physical city, but a person, a bride, a wife. And in the next verse it says that he saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. So who is this bride? Who is the wife of of the Lamb. 
in order to answer this question, we have to go back to the book of Ephesians. The next verse on our verse sheet, the next few verses, is Ephesians 5, 25-27. Let's read these verses together now. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, cleansing her by the washing of the water in the word, that he might present the church to himself glorious, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that she would be holy and without blemish. Amen. These verses begin by saying, Husbands, love your wives. And in comparison to this, it says, Even as Christ loved the church. Here, Christ is presented as the husband, and the church is presented as the wife. And as the verses go on, it uses the word her to describe the church. It says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. <coughs> Underline that. That he might sanctify her. Underline that. Cleansing her by the washing of the water of the word. Amen. That he might present the church to himself glorious. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that she, she would be holy and without blemish. It is very clear here that the church is presented as the wife of Christ, who is the Lamb of God. Uh, there are some other verses in the book of Ephesians. Due to time, I won't get into them today, but you can take note and look at them later. Ephesians 5, 31 through 32 also show us clearly that the church is the wife of the Lamb. Here's another thing to note. In Ephesians, it says that he might present the church to himself glorious. So who will be glorious? The church. But if you go back to Revelation 21, 9 through 11, at the end, it says, He showed me the holy city coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. So in Ephesians, the church is presented glorious. In Revelation, the new Jerusalem is presented glorious. Um, all these parts are kind of coming together now. So I'm going to do a little chart on the board. Maybe you can follow. I'm going to begin with the New Jerusalem. So the New Jerusalem, according to uh, Revelation 21, who is the New Jerusalem? 